All right, guys, uh, our next topic is manufacturing processes. Um, and so one key thing to understand as we're looking at, at this is that you are going to need to do something called design for manufacture. So designers design specifically for optimum use of existing manufacturing capabilities. In other words, if you have uh, an ejection molding machine like you know this one right here, um, this is an injection molder. I'll, I'll explain more about how that process works later. Um, if you have this sort of capability, then it's going to be something that you consider in your designs. You know, uh, we do this all the time in the um, design hub. Uh, if you think of the fact that you know we have, for instance, laser cutters and acrylic benders and 3D printers and those sort of things, you're going to design with those manufacturing capabilities in mind as you're manufacturing your. Um, your your pieces like we don't have an injection molder so you wouldn't design something that would need to be um, injection you know uh, injection molded okay so it's something to just kind of consider that we usually design for our our manufacturing capabilities and this would be important also you know for when you're deciding on like scales of production and things like that um, if if you know this is something that you would use for mass production but for say batch or a one-off production, you wouldn't design something that would need injection molded. All right, so um, let's talk about um, two different kinds of uh, manufacturing. So this is a, an important idea. Is there's the idea of additive manufacturing. Okay, so this is techniques that add material in order to create it. And, and we've already talked about this actually in the rapid prototyping in topic 3.5. Uh, you know, this is things like 3D printing or the laminated object manufacturer or stereolithography. So it's, it's essentially adding material to build it up. Okay, the other type of manufacturing, um, well, not the other type, but one other type, the opposite of additive, is, of course, subtractive or wasting manufacturing. And here, you're cutting away material in order to cre create your component. Have a quick look. This is a short video. Just have a quick look at this, and it shows you um, a really cool milling machine that is uh, subtracting material away from a block of, of aluminum in order to make this part right here. Okay, so we're going to talk about some different types of subtractive manufacturing. So first of all, we have cutting. So you can cut away material, and one of the ways that you can cut away material, so this is, you know, you are reduced, material is reduced to the desired shape through cutting away the material, right? So that's cutting. Uh, and so this is things like saws. You know, you can have hand saws or, or uh, things like this band saw. These are, these are saws that people will use in order to cut away material. You can use scissors, so things like scissors are, are uh, cutting material. So you can have hand scissors, or you know, just don't watch this whole thing, but just have a quick look at this. These are power scissors, um, and they are you know used in things like carbon fiber or Kevlar or something like that. So have a quick look at this video. You don't need to watch the whole thing, but just get a sense of how the power scissors work. You can um, use something called a thicknesser, a planer, a router. So in this case, what you're doing is taking away material, usually from the surface of something. And so these are some different ways that you can do that. Um, this is a planer, and you would feed wood through this, and it would, um, it would cut away the surface of the wood. This is a router. This is used for edges of wood, and it's going to cut away like you can make a curved edge on, on a piece of wood. This thing is called a shear form. And essentially, it's like a cheese grater. So on the bottom here, there's some teeth that look like a cheese grater, and you would run this across the surface of a uh, piece of wood or plastic or whatever it is that you're trying to, to form, and um, it's going to shave away little bits of, of wood. This is a spoke shave, and so you would grab these handles right here, and you would um, pull this across, usually a piece of wood, and it's going to shave off a little piece right here. And same with this. This is sort of a, a similar idea. This you pull towards you. This is something that you would push away from yourself. You'd have, you know, one hand here, one hand here, and you'd push this away from yourself. And this is a, uh, a planer. Um, this is a hand planer. This is a, an electric planer. Um, this thing right here is a plasma cutter, and plasma is a superheated gas. It's essentially, you know, you heat up a gas to a point where it blows off all its electrons, which is one of the most common forms of matter in our solar system because essentially the sun is made out of plasma. 
Um, and you can use this plasma cutter. So this nozzle here will shoot out plasma and it will actually cut through um, surfaces. Um, so this is a plasma cutter. This is a handheld plasma cutter. All of these things are essentially handheld except for this planer right here. You also have uh, oxyacetylene. So oxy, as, as you may guess, is oxygen and acetylene is a type of, of gas and you light it on fire, it burns very hot. The oxygen helps the acetylene burn incredibly hot, and you would use this to cut through materials. You can see this guy is cutting through a big piece of steel with the oxyacetylene oxy torch. Okay, here's some different um, CNC. So the, the, the last slide, this slide is mostly handheld. Um, this is CNC stuff. So CNC stands for Computer Numeric Control. So essentially what you're doing is you're giving a computer some numbers, numeric means numbers, and those numbers are coordinates. They are x, y, and z coordinates, and then the computer will con control the cutting based on that. So the, num the numeric or numbers in here are the, um, the x, y, z coordinates that the, the lasers, laser plasma cutter, water jet cutter is, is using. Okay, um, Some you know, like our laser cutter, this is an example of our laser cutter right here, it really only works on X and Y. So it's giving X and Y coordinates and cutting using X and Y's Y coordinates. And, and these, these other two are also just X, Y, right? So they only do two axes, axes, sorry, two axes, uh, which are the X and Y axis. This is a plasma cutter, so very similar to the handheld plasma cutter that I described earlier. This is shooting out a, a stream of very hot gas. Essentially, you're using like, um, a, like a, almost like a lightning bolt to heat up the gas, a gas, uh, in this case, it would just be air. And that air gets superheated, and it allows you to cut through materials. Then you have things like this. This is a really cool machine. It's called a water jet cutting and you have a very high pressure stream of water that comes screaming out of this nozzle right here and it will cut through metals and wood and plastic and things like that. It's, it's quite a cool thing. Uh, in, in the water there'll be some, uh, some something like sand but there'll be some ab abrasive particles within the water that will help to also cut. You wouldn't want to run your hand through this because it would, it would cut your hand off. They're, they're pretty cool though. So that's a water jet cutter. Um, some other cutting, uh, well, let's talk about the materials that you can cut. So, for instance, this is, um, these are examples from water jet cutting. So, it can, water jet cutters can cut through stone, um, but probably, you know, yeah, so water jet cutters can cut through things like stone. This is a water jet cutter that's cut through aluminum, but we also know that, like, laser cutters can cut through plastic and wood. So, you know, anything that you're sort of doing in two dimensions are good for these, these um, CNC cutters that we talked about here. Okay, so that's laser, plasma, water jet cutting. Really, we're looking at two dimensions. Now, this does have a third dimension, but this really is just it's it's able to um, change its axis so that you get an angle on it. Um, and you know, we can cut wood, plastics, metal, ceramics, stone, tile, all that stuff. So here's an example of stone. Um, design context: you know, we might see like wall clocks, artwork, puzzles, toys. You know anything that's that's going to be needing to cut two dimensions, okay? Flat pack furniture like IKEA. It's probably using stuff like this. Okay, all right. That's that's cutting. Um, some advantages of cutting, especially with CNC, is that they have a, CNC has a very high accuracy, right? So it's it's much more accurate than cutting by hand. Uh, it produces really nice finished quality, produces fine detail, and there's not a lot of distortion. You know, this is compared to, say, like, doing things by hand. Um, disadvantage is that they're pretty expensive. Like, our laser cutters are $25,000 each, so that's, you know, that's a lot of money. When those laser tubes that are in there, when they need to be replaced, which they'll need to in the next couple of years, they cost $10,000 to replace the, the laser tubes. Uh, so they're quite expensive. And you need some special training and skills, right? This is, you know... We don't just let anybody work on the laser cutters. If you had a water jet um, cutter, which we don't have, but they do have up at the university at the core labs, uh, they have that kind of stuff. You know, you need special training. You can't just like go try it and you know, hey, I'll just try it and see if it works. No, you, you need to special training in order to be able to uh, use those pieces of equipment. All right, machining. 
So these are some different types of machining. I'm going to go through some of them that you maybe not be, uh, um, you know, just aware of. You saw, um, so these are these are a drill press, mill machines, lathes, lathes, and a shaper. So this is a drill press, right? And so this is a, a subtractive method because you're removing material. And this is all about machining. So this is going to put uh, vertical holes in things, right? Like that's the whole idea is putting vertical holes in something. Um, this is a, a mill, okay? And a mill has a, a spinning bit, and basically it will cut away pieces on, you know, X and Y axis, and, and possibly Z because you could move it up and down, okay? And this is a hand milling machine. And before uh, CNC, um, again, CNC stands for Computer Numeric Control. Before we had CNC machines, you would do a lot of this milling by hand, and it was a skill that you would learn over many, many, many years. Now you can, uh, a lot of this is done um, automatically um, using CNC, so that's a, a different technique. Uh, of course, that takes a lot of training too, but it's, uh, it's less training than doing it all by hand. Um, we have a lathe, so this is a spinning thing. Go ahead and watch this, this video. You don't have to watch all, it's 10 minutes. Don't watch the whole thing. Just get a sense of what, what a lathe does. So this is a wood lathe, and basically it spins this piece of wood, and you use a, a, a knife. It's not really a knife, but you use something like a knife, and you use that to um, take out, uh, to remove materials. And this is good if you're trying to get something that is round, like a baseball bat or a banister rail or something like that, you know, something that's round. Okay, here we go. This is a shaping machine, okay? And um, the shaper machine is interesting. Go ahead and watch this video so you get a sense of what it does. But essentially, it, it moves on a horizontal axis and it will cut away material moving this way. Okay, so have a, have a quick look at that video too. All right, some advantages of these things, especially if they're CNC, is they can be highly high, highly accurate. Um, they can produce beautiful quality and beautiful quality finishes. Uh, they can have fine detail, and you can have, if especially if it's CNC, you can CAM. By the way, stands for um, Computer Aided Machining. Um, so uh, if if it's CNC or CAM, you can uh, it allows for twenty four percent seven production. Okay. Um, again, expensive. You need um, you need special skills and training, and then less work workers are required. So this is actually an issue with automation. So when you have computers doing the milling that people used to do, then the you're laying off highly skilled workers who used to get paid a lot. So um, that would be a disadvantage of, of machining with CNC. Okay, we have abrading. So abrading is where you are wearing away material using abrasive material. So, um, you know, this is sanding with, uh, you know, sandpaper or scraping or grinding. It could be a disc, a belt, or spindle sanders. So, you know, this is right here. This is something called an angle grinder, and it will grind away material. Uh, I recently fixed a shovel that had a broken handle. It had pins that went all the way through, and I used the angle grinder at the design hub to, to remove the pins, um, and it, it basically just cuts away those those pins, shoots up a lot of sparks. They're actually kind of fun to play with. Not play with, use. Um, you probably recognize this. This is a sander that we have at the uh, uh, this, a palm sander, and this is also the same type of, of belt sander that we have at the design hub. So all of these are abrading machines. They're still subtractive because they're wearing away material, but instead of using, um, you know, cutting, we're abrading. We're we're wearing it away using some sort of like sandpaper or 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 a grinding uh, disc. Okay, we'll get into shaping techniques in the next uh, lesson.